Hey everybody, um, I just wanted to run through a quick uh, summary of a type of problem that we did today with exponential growth or decay, uh, a word problem, and show you one thing that we didn't get a chance to, show, to do in class today. So I've written a problem here that says a patient is given 10 units of insulin. The nurse knows that the amount of insulin in a person's body will decrease at a steady rate of 3.2% per minute. And then I ask you to do several things. Now, first of all, before we even get into the problem, keep in mind, because there's a steady percentage decrease of something, that means it's exponential decay. If there was a steady percentage of growth, that would mean there's exponential growth, right? And we learned formulas that govern those things in class today. And the government, the, the government, haha, the formula that we, they, we learned was this one. Y equals P, which is the initial amount, times one minus R, which is the rate of decay, written as a decimal, to the x power. The x is the number of times that it's compounded. So when this part A asks you to write an equation that describes this situation, when they talk about that, what they're basically saying is, take the things that you know aren't going to change in the problem, which are the initial amount and the rate of decay, which is that percentage, and go ahead and plug them in. And when we do that, it looks like this. The 10 is the initial amount, and the 0 0.032, which is the rate of decay, um, is causing that to go down. So that 0 0.032 is 3.2% written as a decimal. And I can simplify that so it looks like this. So this is all it's asking for when it asks for an equation that describes the situation. It's something that I can plug in x, which is the number of times it's compounded, and get back y, which is the final amount. So that's the answer to part A there. Now for part B, it says use that equation to calculate how much insulin would be remaining in the patient's body after 15 minutes. Now we did do this in class. Essentially, we're trying to figure out what the y is when the x, the number of times it's been compounded, sorry, compounded, been um, calculated, is 15. So when I look at the math for that, it's basically plugging in 15 for x. And when I plug in 15 for x and stick that in my calculator and follow order of operations, I'll get 6.14 units. Simple problem, that's a plug and chug. So part C asks that you use the graph of that equation to estimate how long it would take for the amount of insulin in the patient's body to reach three units. So what I would be looking for is basically to take this equation right here, and I would be looking to see what would make the y equal to three, because the y represents the number of units of insulin in the patient's body. Now. We don't know how to solve for this algebraically yet. We haven't learned how to get x out of an exponent. We don't know how to do that yet. So what we're gonna do is estimate using the graph. So I've taken the equation that we've got right here and I've put it onto Desmos. And here's what that graph looks like. Now, if I were to go to a particular point on that graph, keep in mind my x in this represents the amount of time that's passed and y here represents the, the amount of insulin that's left. So if I were to go to a particular point, say this, 9.86, 7.257, the x value of the point represents the amount of minutes that have passed, and the y value on the point represents the number of units of insulin that are left. So you can see that as time goes by, that number for the number of units goes down and the time goes up, right? So the first question asked us how long, sorry, how many units would be left after 15 minutes? So we got something like 6.14. If I were to go to the graph and land on 15, I get 6.139, which is about 6.14, right? So the second part of this question asked, how long would it take for the insulin to get down to three units? So what I'm gonna do is I wanna know where the Y value is three, because that's the number of units of insulin. So I'm gonna drag along this graph until my y value gets down to three. It's right about here-ish. 37 comma 3.002, if I move one more, it's 37.05, 2.997. Either one of those would be just fine. I'm gonna go with the 3.002 because it's a little bit closer to three than the other one is. So. If I look at that, the y value is the number of units of insulin I have. It did say estimate, so I can sort of guess according to things that I see here. And it looks like it takes about 37 minutes for the amount of insulin to get down to three units. So that's how you use a graph to estimate an x value at which a y value actually occurs.